Hey, and um, just back to Charleston. As was mentioned, he spoke after the game last week. He also said that it's not easy to replace an idol like Hurricane. I know how you view the striker, but from the outside, people gladly along you will look at whoever's playing sense for this. How do you think he's dealing with the pressure of that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess all I can look at again is behaviours and, and, you know, the way he's training and the way he's playing. And I think he's, he's you know, he's handling it okay. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know that there's that much of a, a burden there to carry. Ultimately, like I said, this football club needed to change. And... Change is the only way you can instigate um, a different outcome. Sometimes that's not a better outcome, by the way. It could be a worse outcome, but there needs to be change. And, you know, we I think everyone at the club's got the grips that, you know, Harry's gone and, you know, he's, he's, he's gone off to, to a new challenge and, you know, I'm sure he'll, he'll do very well over there and we've got our own challenge now. But that's... I, I don't think there's any usefulness in comparing yourself to something that's no longer here and, and, you know, it's not really relevant anymore. Um, a bit different if it was on the back of a successful era, yeah? Because successful era is you want some sort of continuation. But the, like I said, at some point there needs to be a break, there needs to be a breakage there of what people um, kind of perceive um, of you as a football club. So that change has happened and... It's not just about Harry, it's about everything we're doing. We're trying to be, like I said, you have to be different if you want a different outcome. Just sticking to Richie from Harry, the cliche of our strikers is more of a worry than not getting chances than missing chances. You didn't really have many chances against United, a couple against Brentford, but you seem quite happy with the performance overall. Is, is it not a concern that your centre forward is not getting so Two games in, mate. Come on. Um, geez, we love the big call, don't we? Um, I, I just don't. I, I, I never. I, I never live in that kind of moment where I judge things that quickly. And I and I get why others do. I, I get it. You know, you should be on six goals and top goal scorer in the league. And everyone said, look, he's going to replace Harry. He's going to score more goals. But you know, it, it, you don't know at this point in time how many goals is going to end up at the end of the year. You don't know. So why put a judgment? Like I said, I thought he played really well. It was a really good link up for us especially in the second half when we had the ascendancy you you know if you look at the passages back at the passages of play he was an important part of that you know just holding the ball up playing out wide being a real presence in the box I thought he was unlucky on a couple of occasions I mean it's come off the crossbar a couple of scrambles that another day falls from his score so he's in, in those areas so I said I don't I don't look at it it's, it's the same as our form so far I'm not looking at our form so god geez we're going to be unbelievable this year it's two games you know and in those two games there was some real positive stuff, but there's also a lot there that tells me we've got a long way to go. So, you know, um, I get why others sort of get emotional. It's an emotional game, but that's not the way I kind of look at it from from my perspective. It's about, you know, um, I thought we needed to be strong as a team to get a result last week, last week and I thought Richie was an important part of that. Just, just finally, I know it's been two games, but last season he described his own season in four letter words and think over it. Yeah. Um, straight honest. It wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me based on that season if his confidence wasn't at the highest. How have you helped him with that? I don't know if I've sort of specifically helped him. Again, I think that's, you know, I was talking about it before. I think he's not the only one in that boat. I mean, you talked about, you know, Pape Sar last year, you know, Basuma last year. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of boat guys in that boat, and and what what I tried to do is from the first day they walked in here is to show them that it's a different place, and then give them the opportunity to see whether you know that helps them get to a good place in terms of their own confidence, their own self belief. You know, so um, it's not a it's not just about targeting the individual; it's about the whole environment. And um, you know, they've walked into pre-season or whenever they've come back to the club and they've seen new coaches, new ideas, new way of training, new... And, and what you hope in that context is that all those guys see it, OK, well, here's an opportunity for me now to, to do what I, I want to do and have, you know, some self-belief. So it's not a, it's not that I've, you know, I've had to do anything specific with him. Um, because, again, I, I don't want... I, I don't want anybody coming into this year. I didn't want anybody with 
you know, carrying the baggage of, of or the burden of anything that's gone on in the past. There's no point in that, you know. There's no, I don't, I come in with, you know, the energy that it's something new and something, you know, an exciting opportunity and that's what I wanted the players to feel like. Gary? Like I said, I think, you know, looking back at the game, my sort of general feelings after the game were that we looked a bit sort of nervy and edgy at the start, and I think that was that was the case when I look back at the game. I thought our structure was actually not too bad, but we just were maybe rushing things a little bit in, in terms of our build-up play and in terms of maybe trying too hard to to impress because it was our first home game rather than simplifying the game. And I thought, I think the most pleasing thing for me is when we bought them in at half time. And like I said, I felt in the last sort of 10 minutes there was some really good stuff and, and that's what we showed them at half time. Just a couple of passages of play in that last 10 minutes that, you know, it showed it was working if we kept the game simple. And and again, you know, you, you, like anyone, you know, like any manager, you, you try and offer advice, but then it's, you know, has that sort of registered. That's the key thing. And I just thought we had a really good energy from the start of the second half. There, was, there wasn't, a, you know, any kind of despondency in, in what they went through in the first half. Because it's fair to say, you know, man, you had a couple of really good chances and could have been a goal down. Not that that meant we were going to lose the game because, you know, we went a goal down at Brentford and we, we fought back. So, but... But within that context, it was about showing them, you know, if we kept the game simple and, and stuck to our structures and, and kept working hard, that there was some opportunities. And, and I thought they took that um, sort of information really well. Um, and I thought our first sort of 20 minutes, the second half, was probably the best football we've played so far this year. Um, it's only 20 minutes. Are they trying to impress you or are they trying to impress the players? Just impress in general. I mean, it's a first home game. You know, you want to. You know, who doesn't want to? You know, you if you you know if you if you're going into you know a new surrounding, not a new surrounding, but a, a surrounding where you know it's important. You, you want to put your best foot forward. So, is that obviously? Did you say that forward is not just about goals; it's about contribution, it's about being aggressive. Is there a point now perhaps where it gets into his head, and you would you? Would you Is there a point where you sort of say? Yeah, if he's gone twenty games without a goal, yeah, for sure I'll have a discussion with him, mate. But, but, but not after two games, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, of course, there's always a point, but yeah, usually there's there's reasoning behind it. But I mean, you know, like, um, but not two games. Look, I, you know, I think if, if Richie was playing for another Premier League team and scored between ten and fifteen goals last year, like he did when he was at Everton, I think people are saying, why don't you go sign Richarlison? He's a proven Premier League player, so he's here. So, I, But I think I don't have that sort of, you know, I don't look at it through the lens of last year. I just look at it through the lens of now, you know, and we're two games into a season where I think he's helped us, you know, in this early stage where our football's not where we need it to be to, to, to get a couple of promising results and hopefully that continues. Like, But, you know, of course there's always a point, but we're nowhere near that at the moment. Aaron, and then finish with George. Um, just to make self of a ball match, um, we have talked a couple of times about my journey. Um, and yet, like, where have you gone with that respect for the information you've done? Do you think, well, I'll ask it in a different way, do you think of the way Australian head coaches are perceived? Why is it that you always have to justify yourself? Yeah, I, I don't think it's just Australian. I think, you know, if you come from sort of a non-traditional, oh, well, I don't even know if that's the right word, but, a, you know, what people sort of see as um, kind of football, um, fertile ground, you know, if you're not sort of European or South American, there's, there's kind of, there is, you know, I guess a, <clears throat> a stigma more against, you know, you your abilities and, and your experience rather than, you know, I, I get that people say, well, okay, so you won a couple of titles in Australia, well, what does that mean? Yeah, but I still had to win them, you know. It, it was in a competition that was variable to what I was working with, you know. You still need to win, you know. Um, it's the same when I went to Japan. I still needed to win against comparable opposition, that, you know. 
you know, at Celtic, you know, we, we, we were successful, but you have to be successful up there. So, you know, if I wasn't Australian, if I was of European or maybe South American background and I'd done all these things in, in nations here in Europe that maybe weren't even first-tier nations, you know, I think people would look at it different. Um, but, I, you know, at the same time, you know, like I said, I, it hasn't been like a a millstone around my, my neck or anything. I don't worry about it or, you know, cry. You know, I've really enjoyed my career. I've loved my journey. You know, I think it's made me, uh, certainly given me the, the experience to make me hopefully a, a better manager and a, and a better person in many respects because it hasn't been sort of your, your conventional kind of um, football managerial career. I've, I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it and I think it, to me it, it feels like it's something that helps me um, wherever I am. Awesome. Yeah, I think so. Um, but I, I don't think that's a bad thing because I think it, it does help. Like I said, you know, 30 years ago, it was, it was, it was Arsenal. But then, you know, with what he did as a football manager, it, it kind of, I think it helped the Premier League grow. You know, I think that's the things, that's how you get growth by, and, and it's not always about looking further down, right? Sometimes it's right in front of you. You know, it could be English managers here, you know, right in front of them that they're missing because of whatever the current trend is or what they think is a model, you know, and, and I've always liked people that, that I've always sort of been attracted to listening or to, to, to observing people who and organisations that do things a little bit differently, that are prepared to look beyond just, you know, what everyone else is looking at, you know, just lift their heads a little bit or maybe look a bit left or right and, and see, you know, because it doesn't have to be come from Australia. Like I said, they, they could be in your neighbourhood, you know, right there in front of you and you're not looking at them because it doesn't fit a mould that somehow people think you know, you, you, you need to be to, to work at this level. So, and I think that's how you get growth. I think, you know, by having, you know, different people, um, people with different experiences, different journeys coming into an organisation or into a competition and then you grow because all of a sudden then others start thinking the same way. Well, hold on a second, if they've done it, why don't we do something like that? And all of a sudden you, you, you what seems left field becomes the norm, you know, and it improves you, improves you know, the space you're working in. So, you know, hopefully, and I've tried to do that. I mean, I, to be honest, I faced a similar thing in Japan, you know, because it was a different kind of, you know, where, again, um, you know, they play the game a certain way, They, you know, and, and me trying to change that and provoke that a little bit while being respectful to the fact that, you know, it's a fairly... Um, yeah, you know, there's some, some real strong values in that nation. I love that, but then you know you do it, and then people all of a sudden say, you know, that's great. Let's have more of it. So you know, I've tried to do that wherever I've been. Yeah. With that in mind, um, you uh, built your old say, but obviously your knowledge is quite extensive in terms of uh, Asiatic players, mm. Australia, Tartan, mm. and Celtic players as well. As you look to garnish what you've done already, it gets further. I'm going to look into that. Yeah, again, I think it's not just me. You look at, you know, people are raving about Matoma. You know, I, I watched Matoma's debut in Japan. I was on the opposition bench. You know, he'd come straight from uni and in his first game destroyed us. I knew nothing about him. I, I said to my opposition guys, who's this guy? Go, oh, he's just come from uni. Oh, well, how good can he be? You know, he's put his school books down and he, he blew us away, him and Hatate that day, you know, we played Kawasaki and, uh, yeah, we were champions. Kawasaki had finished second. We played in the first game of the year and um, Hatate and Matoma just blew us away. And this, like I said, this is a guy who's come from university straight into senior football. So I did, yeah, but Brighton were too, too sharp for me, mate. Um, so. <laughs> I, I ended up getting um, Rayo, but, but I said at the time, I said to the guys at Celtic, I go, because, you know, Brighton put him, um, I think, in uh, in Belgium first year for, on the loan, yeah. And I said to him, you watch this guy, when he hits the Premier League, he's going to he's gonna rip it apart. I, I knew. And, and, and again, that 
it's easy for me to sit and say that, but I was exposed to that. That's what I mean, you know, by having this different journey. You get exp- and then all of a sudden that changed my thinking. I'm thinking, well, who cares? This has been a uni. Like, is there any other university players and that are coming out that we can grab, you know? And and, and then that you take that sort of open-mindedness in your next role. And so when I went to, to Scotland, I thought, yeah, I'm going to bring three or four Japanese. They're going to make it here. And people say, well, it's a bit radical. No, it's not actually. And I'm, I'm the same here. And it's not just about Japan, but just – looking you know when you're looking at players just don't look at what everyone else is looking at you know because you'd be surprised um you know to see a guy who comes out of university and within three years is you know an unbelievable talent in the most difficult league in the world it just goes just goes to show you yeah the big price, if he doesn't cost 50 plus, he's going to say, what is it, so he's going to come to, spot on. And that's where, you know, the, the, there's obviously, you know, there's a reason you, you pay sort of premiums for some players. You understand that the talent's there, but I don't believe that the best talent is just that, that 50 to 100 million pound sort of market. You know, there's some very, very good footballers and, and prepare if you're prepared to look beyond just what everyone else is looking at, you'd be surprised what you're finding. Yep. Who's been the most exceptional yeah, look, I, I, I uh, you know, I, wherever I've worked, I, I've, I've tried to make sure that, you know, going in, I've, I've been really clear on, you know, the way I work and the way I'm going to work, and, and, you know, how I've, you know, how I sort of set things up to try and get success for that, you know, for whatever club I'm working for, and I've worked for all different types of ownership models you know and uh and they've all been different um my role within that is to to get a connection with the people who make the decisions because i do I, I can't do this in isolation i need everyone on board and particularly when we when you when there's a usually and wherever i've gone that's happened a major shift in direction if everyone's not on board it's not going to work it's not going to work so you know um i i'm i'm really pleased with the way people have sort of embraced the direction we're going in terms of the way we're working. Um, you know, I've brought in new staff that I've never worked with before and, and that can make people uneasy within the football club. But, you know, the, 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 the people who run this club were happy for me to go in that direction. So that they're the kind of things I look for. It's not just about being backed with money. It's a manner in which you work. It's the authority you're given. Um, and like I said, people who know me in my career, I... If I want something done, I usually get it done in my own way. George? Yes, okay. And um, we've had a few people in the market. In the other day, I've grown from the source of nice sort of links between him and Charles, so approval things just quite come off, but it's quite encouraging. Are you sort of seeing that more and more in, in training of the industry? Is that something that's given you a lot of encouragement to Charles? Yeah, look, I, I, yeah, I am, and and but that's where I, I know that we've still got a long way to go because the, there isn't that sort of understanding yet. You know, Matters has been with us for like you know a month. You know, you know, two two sort of Premier League games, and it, it, especially when you're talking about you know actually both sides of the game, attacking and defensive. A lot of it is understanding. You know. You, Two centre halves need a good understanding. We've got Mickey and, and you know Romero have played two games together. You know the midfield setups need a bit of understanding. The front third, you know, reading of how people play and and their own idiosyncrasies within that. When to make a run? When are they going to put those things? Take time, you know. And obviously you work on it in training, and I, you do. You know, we at times we our, our training's been really good, and, and you know the coaching staff putting on some brilliant sessions where you see it come to life. But it's not natural at the moment. It's, it can't be, you know, it's going to take, you know, I don't know how long, but it'll take a while before it becomes natural. But oh, I've certainly seen it. And, you know, if you're the creative player, say, like Matters, you want to try and read Sonny's runs, which are different to, say, Kulisevsky's runs, which are different to Richie's runs. And if you're those players, you know, 
you know, you're looking for the cue when, when Matters is going to turn or a Basuma's or Pape Sar is going to make a run that means you're involved. All those kind of things, you know, those relationships take time. But, um, you know, I, I haven't, you know, I've been pleased in, in I think our attacking play is the area where we will, we've got much more improvement to do, but I, I have seen some really good signs early on. Just finally, in terms of that attacking area, there's a lot of focus on Richie. What may your Sonny and Andrew Zepsky's sort of focus on Richie? Because obviously, the early days. Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think that they're, they're growing into it again. They've been asked to play differently from the past. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not one where... Um, you know, you, you even though they're they're experienced, really accomplished players. You know, in Sonny's case, um, sometimes they're the hardest ones to work with if they're not sort of open-minded. Because they'll turn around and say, "Well, mate, I've made a career out of playing this way, and you know, very good career. Why should I change?" You know, what so that can be a real difficult task for me coming in. Uh, but um, he's been really good at just. You know, understanding the role we, and the, the, the way it's different from last year. And I thought last week both of them had some really good moments. And I think as a team, that's where we're at, where we're going to have good moments. So, I mean, I, I'd love for us to have a sort of really compelling performance this early in the season, but I, I just think at the moment if we can grasp on those moments individually and collectively and um, and then grow from there, then then I think we'll, 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 we'll be... You know, we'll be in good shape. I'll give you my story of the week. Um, I met Ozzy Ardilis yesterday. Absolute legend. Yeah. Absolute legend of the football club. And growing up in Australia, um, you know, that time of him and Ricky Villa, I mean, you know, we, 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 we were sort of, um, well, we held him up as, as kind of idols. We weren't Tottenham supporters, but just players who you just go, wow. And uh, when I got the job, one of my best mates said, you know, you've got to get a photo with Ozzy Ardilis, you know. So I was, I was wrapped yesterday, but he was also my um, my go-to um, trivia question because when we were growing up, we had a famous Australian footballer, Craig Johnson, who played for Liverpool and won the FA Cup. And he was icon again, the FA Cup Aussie. But before that, my trivia question was always, he was the first Aussie to win an FA Cup. And they always used to say, Craig Johnson, he was Aussie Ardillis. And just to further further my uh, unique football journey, the person who told me that joke was Sir Bobby Charlton. He came out to Australia for a soccer clinic and that was the joke he told me and stayed with me ever since. So there you go. All right. Thank you.